It is impossible to imagine Donald Trump without the force of whiteness. That's just all there is. And when you ask yourself, why would majorities of white people across socioeconomic demographics, across gender lines, across education lines, endorse someone who only had whiteness to offer, and all you come to is tribalism? That's all that's left. The theory was that there was this white working class, you know, in the middle of the country that was being ignored, and Trump was their cry of protest. But that ignored the fact that white people across the board in all demographics voted for Trump. What's their excuse? You know, one might recall the white working class Donald Trump's base. One of those adjectives is doing more work than the other. What you have to understand is it wasn't just that Donald Trump was a white dude who showed up and had never held public office. The essence of his identity was the negation of Barack Obama, and that began you know, with birtherism. Contrary to the notion that that would hurt him, in fact, it looks like it helped him. There's never been a situation in which a white male seeking to be president could use a black president as a foil. Never has there been a president that allows you to say, I'm not a nigger. All presidents before Barack Obama, every single one was a white man. What separates Donald Trump is also all of these white men had made their mark somehow in the public sphere. Donald Trump is distinguished but being a white male who ran on whiteness as his sole attribute. It's very hard to accept that the majority of white people would do something like this. It's hard. And for white reasons, <laughs> by which I mean for reasons of power. Well, not for blonde-haired reasons or for blue-eyed reasons, but for reasons of just pure power. It's tough to take.